Welcome to the Amazing Framework series. Ch. Hi. In this video, we will learn. Ch. You saw a thumbnail. You saw a title. Yes. In this video or series, we will learn framework all the way from scratch. Also, creating a portfolio website like this with some amazing learning animations, scrolling animations, adding your media, components, effects, styles, micro interactions, and more. Wait. There's more in the website. Just take it as a glimpse. Yeah, that's it for the intro. Can I show my face more than this? Huh? So this is Framer, and you may be asking, how do I get into this project at the first step? What? Are you dumb? You just go to Google, search for Framer, go to their website, log in, and create a new project. That's it. As this is the first video of the series, so let's talk about the layout of Framer. And by the end of the series, we will be creating something like this portfolio website with some amazing landing animations, micro interactions, and uh, this amazing scrolling animations. So, yep, while learning Framer all the way from zero. So the layout on the left we have these pages. Now here we have this home page, and yes, we can have multiple pages by just hitting this plus and add a new page. There you go. Now this page can be like products detail page, and the next page can be like checkout page. So that you can create like multiple pages in Framer, and you can just hit these three dots to delete. Delete. Now here we have these pages and layers. This is a section where all the components that have added in this design file will be visible over this layer section. Now over here we have these assets. So this assets will contain all the components, styles that you have used in your design. Now you may be asking, what are these components, styles, and all those things? What? Have some patience. We will learn them all. Nothing to worry. And on the top, we'll have this framer icon. This contains all these actions, like basic actions you can do with your design, like with the file, new file, new page, and edit, undo, redo. And if you have observed, you can see the shortcuts over here, Command Z. And for Windows, it will be different. So for each action, you'll be having this shortcut that you can check it out over here. Amazing. And next to it, we have this insert. So this insert contains all the components. I mean, the predefined designs that you can just add in your design, like predefined uh, templates or sections that you can directly add into your design. So we have these pages. If you want, you can directly add a page. So let's say I want this landing page. Add page. This is a complete page. You can see right home page. In this layers, we have this complete page design. Awesome. After that, we have these sections. So section is nothing but a part of your page. I mean a part of your design. This page is nothing but a complete website, like from top to bottom. This section is a part of this page. So let's say I want this section. I can just click on that, and there you go. We have this small section that you can use in your website. So we have these pages, sections, and navigation, and we have these menus that you can also add in your design files. And CMS. This CMS is nothing but the one which we use when we have these products or a list of products that we have used in your website. When you have these multiple products, you can use CMS to organize them to change them whenever you want simply with just a click. So CMS, keep it aside. We will learn that at the last. And next we have these elements where we can add these predefined elements in your designs as well. Like we have this fit text, arc, and scribbles. Let's say I want the scribbles. There you go. You can add the scribbles into your design. So there you go. You have this swirl, heart, zap, and all the scribbles that you can use in your design. Again, we have this uh, media. So media, you know, you can add this image in your design, GIF, video. You can directly add a YouTube video into your design. There's uh, animations, audio, and all those things. And forms. This form is important. So if you're doing a portfolio website, you know you'll be having a form like to get the details of this client, like their email, the product cost, briefings, and all those things. So we'll also cover these forms. Who is teaching you, man? Me. So don't worry, we'll cover everything. So again, we have this email signups and icons, interactive. So these interactives are important. Yeah, which we'll be using in our design. So Framer already have this predefined uh, interactives that you can just drag and use in your designs. So making us easy. So that's about this insert and next layout. This is important. So this is where we will add all this frame, rows, columns, grids, and all those things in our designs. So if you are familiar with Figma and if you know Framer and all those things. Yeah, same. Figma and Framer, they're like both same to same. But Framer has some additional features like this uh, scrolling animations, publishing this uh, sites without any code. So yes, there are some extra features. But regarding the design, like this frame, add the images, auto layouts, components, and all those things are same as Figma. Oh, and next we have this text. You can add this uh, text box over here. Type something, and we can add the text. 
CMS as I said and plugins. We know what plugins are. Yeah, predefined ones. So let's say I want this icons. I'll type icons. Bootstrap icons and there you go. We have this icons. Just drag and there you go. Predefined icons or predefined images or predefined mockups. Like plugins are like predefined stuff. And next we have this uh, details of your project. Like your name or logo, settings, analytics when you publish your website. This is nothing but to preview your website. So there you go. There's nothing over here because it is empty. So we have this invite, we have this publish. And on the right we'll have all the properties of this components that you have used in your design. So let's say I've added this frame. And there you go, we get the, all the properties of the frame. Like this position, size, layout, effect, overlay, cursor, styles, transform, scroll section, accessibility, code, export and all those things. Yeah, don't worry, we will learn all those things. Because at last we'll be doing something like this, right? So we'll cover all the topics. It's amazing, right? We have this amazing scroll animation, we have this uh, YouTube over here. And you can just play or you can just leave it like that. Again, we'll have this uh, scrolling animation, we have this... Uh, loop animation, this flip animation and all those things. So don't worry, it will be amazing. Now let's start with our design. Yeah, that's for the layout because I don't want to drag much on this layout. Now before we go and create this amazing designs or websites or anything, there are a few things we have to cover. Nothing but how to zoom in, zoom out, scroll, move, duplicate and all those things. First thing first, how to zoom in and zoom out. Huh, simple. On your keyboard, press the control or command key. Command key for Mac, huh, poor fellows, and scroll, there you go, zoom out and zoom in. And also you can just uh, press the control command and use the plus and minus key, plus for zoom in and minus zoom out. So other option, you can just go over here, we have this zoom, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in and zoom out, we have the short forms over here and zoom to 100%, zoom to fit, zoom to selection. I mean, whenever you have this element that you want to zoom, you can go for this. Next, how to move around. Press the scroll key and there you go. Move around. Awesome. And when you just uh, scroll, there you go, you'll just scroll up and down of your website. Now, let's say I have an element inside my design. Okay. I'll just uh, press F for my frame or rectangle and there you go. I'll tell you how I've just added this or why I added this? Just have some patience. Now how do I duplicate this element? There are multiple ways. Right click, we have this copy, command C, shortcut and for Windows it will be control C. I don't know, I use Mac. I only believe in Steve Jobs. Huh. And I'll just copy this uh, frame, I'll just go to the paste and paste. Or easier way, you can just go for this duplicate. Command D, duplicate and there you go. We have this duplicated frame. And for undo, we have this again shortcut, command Z. So you can go with this uh, file, sorry edit. We have this undo, command Z, redo, up arrow, command Z. So for undo, command Z or for Windows it will be control Z. So there you go, undo. Now, most easier way to duplicate is nothing but alt key. What I mean by alt key. So press the element you want to duplicate, press alt key and drag. There you go. That's it for duplication. Yeah. So I think these are only the things that we'll be using more and more. Like zoom in, zoom out, move, uh, duplicate, undo, redo. Yeah, that's it. If there's anything more, we'll just talk about it later. So if you want to delete this uh, frame, right click, you can just uh, delete or press the delete key. Awesome. So now let's start designing. First thing first, we will start with this landing page. Let's call it as landing page. And if you have seen, this landing page has this uh, background color, image, text and micro interactions, right? And remember, whenever the height is changed or the width has been changed, no matter what, the landing page is completely taking this uh, width and height. And then the scrolling action takes place, right? So first thing first, let's add a frame. And to do that, you'll go to this layout, you'll hit this frame or you can use the shortcut F. So hit this frame and drag. There you go, we have a frame. Now this frame is like a section, the landing section. So whatever content I want to be in this landing section will be inside this frame. And also it can act as a boundary. And whatever component is like moving out of this uh, border will give the overflow as hidden. Now this frame, as I said, is the landing section. So I want it to be like completely filling this width. You can see this over here, right? Whenever the width has been changed, it's completely filling up the width of the viewport, right? 
So to do that, you'll have to go with this width and height over here. We have this width of fixed relative fill and fit content. Now I have to go with this fill because whenever the width of this desktop has been changed, it has to completely fill the width. But I cannot do that. Why? Because before we go into this size and all, we have to learn about the type, position. Should it be absolute, relative, fixed or sticky? Like what are those things? So I'll add a frame and let's say this is the landing section, right? I'll add another frame and this becomes like about me section. So first what I'll do is I'll select this desktop or the parent section and I will add a layout. This layout is nothing but same as auto layout in Figma, like the rules that these inside components have to follow. So add a layout and there you go. We have this type stack and grid. I want a stack. I'll go with this vertical layout. So I can go with this horizontal if I want, there you go, or this vertical. And it should start from the center. There you go. It will be at the center. These two frames will be at the center. The alignment should it be to the right, center or left. And wrap. So wrap is nothing but, let's uh, undo. So wrap is nothing but, what I'll do is, I will add another frame over here. You my friend be horizontal. So, so here I have these three frames and I've gone with this horizontal layout. So wrap is nothing but I'll just go with yes. So wrap is nothing but when the desktop width is of 1453, these three frames can be side to side, right? But whenever I reduce the width, there you go. This third one came down. Why? Because we have given this fixed width, right? So when the desktop is of uh, 1416, this third element cannot fit over here. So that's the reason it went down. And till this point, when the desktop width is about 1023, these two can be side to side. And below that, there you go, these two came down because at this point, this event cannot be over here. So that's about wrap. Wrap is nothing but an inclusion of uh, both vertical and horizontal layout. Yeah, that's it. I'll just undo, 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 undo. So now I have this desktop with these two frames and I've gone with this uh, rules of this stack distribution and this uh, wrap and gap is nothing but the gap between these two. There you go. So I can go with the start, center or this end if I want and space between is nothing but the space between these two are, is like variable and make sure that these two are like spread to the top and to the bottom. So that's about space between. I just undo, I'll go with the start. And padding is something but the margins if you want, like I want uh, 60. So that's the margin. So I'll have 16 gap from the top, bottom, left and right. And if I want some individual padding, I can go with this icon over here. So I can go with this individual padding. I want bottom zero, no change because there's nothing over here, right? And top, I want it to be 100. So there you go. So this desktop has some rules that these two frames has to follow. Now when I select this inside frame or the child frame, we have this position called absolute, relative, fixed and sticky. What are those? So relative is nothing but at this point, this frame has to follow the rules. What I mean by that? You see, these two are following the rules given by this uh, desktop layout because this frame has a type of relative and this frame also has a type of relative. So relative is nothing but the freedom of this frame is given to the parent one. So whatever the desktop, uh, I mean, whatever the parent says, this child has to follow those rules. And next, absolute, or first I'll talk about fixed. So fixed, when I select that, what happened? You see this frame has like gone to the top. Why? Fixed is nothing but this frame, I mean, which has this type as fixed, does not follow the rules given by this desktop. It has its own freedom. So oh, what I'll do is I'll select the desktop and give a padding of uh, say 100. So that I can see this one at the bottom. Uh, 300 so there you go now this one is not following any rules given by this desktop now let's say I'll just uh, increase this height to some extent and preview so if I scroll you can see this frame is fixed over there there is no change and this one is moving because we have given that a relative so this is fixed over there so there you go if you scroll this is fixed over here because this frame has a type of fixed and this is moving because we have given this relative. Now the other one is absolute. So absolute is something but same as fixed. It will not follow the rules given with this desktop. I can move it anywhere I want. But I cannot move this one because it is relative, right? 
So absolute is nothing but it is same as fixed. I can keep anywhere I want. But when I preview this, you observe that if I scroll, even this frame is moving because absolute is nothing but same as fixed, but it is relative. Yeah, it does not follow the rules, but it is still relative. I mean, let's make it uh, simpler. Absolute is nothing but the frame does not follow the rules, but it is still considered inside this desktop. I mean the parent. But when I go with this uh, fixed, it also does not follow the rules, but this frame is not considered inside this parent. So no scrolling effect. Simple. Now let's go with this sticky. Uh, to understand sticky better, what I'll do is, so here in this desktop, I have this uh, stack. It has its own height and width and inside that stack, we have this frame. So I have given this frame a sticky. And remember when you want a component or a frame to be sticky, you have to change uh, the parent. You have to change this parent overflow to visible. We'll talk more about the styles in upcoming videos when it's needed. And this desktop is also a parent, right? So again, I have to go with this overflow as visible. Now I'll just uh, preview. So observe, so this blue is nothing but a stack and inside this uh, stack, we have this frame that we have given this a uh, sticky. So sticky is nothing but let's scroll. It is relative and whenever it reaches this top of the parent one, it is fixed over there. Now it is not relative. So there you go, you can scroll and it will be still on the top. And whenever it reaches the uh, end point of this frame or end point of its parent frame, there you go, it is back to relative. So that's about sticky. So that's about sticky. Now you understood what this absolute is, relative is and fixed and sticky is, right? Awesome. And also you can give this top uh, if you want, like from the top, I want it to be 20. So there will be like 20 gap. So preview. So there you go. It is ticked over there and there's some gap of 20. Ha, super awesome. Now that's it for the video. Yes, we don't want to learn everything in a single video like sit for two hours and done. No, I feel like we have to just limit ourselves and just learn for 10 minutes so that we can remember all of this content for a long time. So really speaking, I'm just tired of recording for this much. We'll just start designing and learn the properties and all those stuff in the next video or the next episode that will be coming tomorrow, I guess. So subscribe if you haven't. What? You have just watched till then and not subscribed? Lazy fellow. Okay, bye.